Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from the Dutch Women's Championship uh, 2022. Sorry about that, it says 2021 on my interface. Uh, last video was 2021, so I guess I forgot to update it. Uh, just give me a second there. Uh, there we go. Alright, so Dutch Women's Championship 2022 and I saw this um, uh, on Twitter and I, I decided to check out the game. The position was very interesting and I, I, I uh, couldn't... Um, uh, realize immediately how, how the position could happen so quickly in the game. It's like the, the game is wrapped up pretty much in 10 moves. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you, you will see. It's really awesome. You guys will have a very nice pause the video moment. Uh, and uh, the game is between uh, two Dutch players, uh, uh, Maike Ketman and Anna Maya Kazarian. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I almost, uh, you know, almost exclusively, I, I always butcher Dutch names. Um, uh, so let's check it out. And one thing I wanted to apologize yesterday during the stream, during the uh, Multiverse X Christmas Arena, uh, which was won by Noderbeck Jakubov. So congratulations on that. I said that uh, maybe, I'm not sure that maybe Noderbeck Abdusatro will not be defending his title as the World Rapid Champion because I've heard uh, somewhere on Twitter someone was discussing this. Uh, it is not true. He is confirmed that he will play in the World Rapid Championship and will defend, will try to defend his title. So sorry about that. Now, getting to the game let's check it out uh, really an awesome one so uh, Mike uh, with the white pieces opens with e4 we have e6 Anamaya goes for the French defense uh, we have d4 d5 and now bishop to d3 going for the Schlechta variation against the, the French and uh, uh, regarding Schlechta we haven't really discussed him all that much on the channel uh, but there's a really really interesting story and it doesn't take long I'm just going to share it with you so uh, he played in in 1910 uh, he played the world chess championship match against none other than then uh, Emmanuel Lasker, and uh, he was leading up uh, up to the last game. It was the uh, t uh, 10 games were being played, and uh, going into game 10, he was leading. And he only needed a draw to actually win the match, but he went uh, uh, for an all-out attack with the black pieces and then lost in the end. Uh, Alaska equalized the match and uh, which means that he was uh, to retain the title but uh, the question is and the, 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 this is something that is being discussed I believe still actively I don't I, I don't think anyone knows if this is actually uh, true maybe some chess historians do uh, that there was a clause uh, that uh, Schlechter needed to win by a two-point margin to actually take the title away from Lasker uh, and that's why he went uh, for such an all-out attack in the final game even though he was leading the match a uh, really weird stuff but uh, at one point, we will probably do a Lasker saga and then we're going to investigate it a, a little bit deeper. But okay, uh, th this is the Schlechter variation. Uh, C5 now uh, makes sense. That you always play this against the French. Uh, uh, when playing the French, you want to attack white strong center. E captures on D5, Queen captures on D5, and now Knight to C3. And this is where the fun really starts. Uh, here, exclusively, you go back, queen to d8. But in the game, uh, Anama decided to try and snatch the pawn. She played queen captures on d4, and this means that black will now be on the defensive. And I don't know, maybe on the absolute highest level, this is already a loss for black, uh, but it's not going to be easy, even if it's not. So knight to b5 attacks the queen and threatens knight to c7 check to pick up the rook on a8. So of course, you have to bring the queen back now. Queen to d8 and now bishop to f4. Developing with tempo, now the threat again remains. Knight to c7 check. So knight to a6 only move that defends the c7 square and now queen to e2. Developing the queen and making room for a nice queenside castle which will also come with tempo, sort of a half a tempo, an x-ray tempo if you will as the black queen will share the d file with the rook. So knight to f6 and now comes queenside castles. And now how do you, how do you play this? There are some games that reach this position where queen to a5 was played uh, because you really don't want your queen on the d file but in this game queen to b6 was played and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game and now look at this um uh, Mike uh, continues developing knight to f3, uh, sorry, not knight to f3, uh, bishop to c4, freeing up the uh, the d file for the rook, uh, and now comes bishop to d7. It doesn't matter if black plays bishop to, to e7 and tries castling kingside, uh, the result would be pretty much the same. But in the game, bishop to d7 was played, now we have knight to f3, and here queenside castles. So Anamaya decides that uh, she will castle queenside, and everything should be perfectly fine now. She snatched the pawn, uh, she castled her king to safety if she can get some developing moves in uh, she's gonna be 
uh, completely fine. Even though, okay, how do you get the, the king off of this uh, <laughs> c8 square? You would really like him in the corner, but that's not happening anytime soon. You can't kick away the knight. You can't really put anything on d6. The white controls d6. And uh, here, white has a couple of ways to actually win the game, uh, and Mike does it in the, in the coolest way possible. So feel free to pause the video and try to figure out what you played while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, wild idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to d6. That's right. You offer the rook and uh, black uh, can't really decline this. If uh, black declines this, it's going to be even worse. Uh, to give you an example, uh, you don't really have any squares for the queen. You could put the queen on a5, but this just, uh, you know, uh, black can resign right away. Look at this. Knight captures an a7 check. King to b8, you have to go under the mask of the bishop. If you go king to c7, it's even worse. Rook c6 is uh, mate in one. So you're, you're going to have to play king to b8. And now rook captures an a6, opens up a discovery, forces the king in the corner. And after king to a8, you pick up the queen. And now once the knight moves, it's going to be checkmate. Uh, well, black can give up some material to, to be checkmated in a few moves. But basically, it's mate in one once the knight moves. Uh, so that's what happens if you decline the rook. So there's nothing uh, to do but to accept it. Bishop captures captures on d6 and now knight captures on d6 forces the king under the mask of the bishop king to b8 and now what do you play well there are a couple of ways you could play this but first and bishop captures on a6 and the problem is there's no good way to capture the bishop if you uh, if you capture it with the queen uh, then the problem is just knight to b5 check and now look at this king to c8 you're gonna play queen e5 and uh, black is getting checkmate it doesn't really matter what you do and the other way to capture the bishop is to capture with the pawn but now you are uh, within the reach of the knight just knight to c4 check picks up the queen and that's it there's no defending this so for the moment the bishop cannot be captured here Anamaya finds a, a great defensive move she plays knight to d5 and now if white is uh, a bit hasty for example white wants to continue right away let's say knight to c4 or opens up a discovery on the queen and delivers check to the king then the idea was knight captures on f4 and to attack the white queen and now of course if you capture the queen white queen comes off with check and that's pretty much it and uh, there, there's really not much you can do even if you play queen to e5 uh, instead of this uh, knight captures even if you try queen to e5 check first then queen to c7 and black defends uh, with uh, material advantage so that's why after this knight to d5 move which is a, a good defensive idea uh, bishop to e5 and now you really don't have any uh, any other options um uh, as uh, the, the 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 knight will not be able to capture the bishop with check so here queen captures on a6 offers a queen trade but now black is just down too much uh, knight captures on f7 opens up a discovery here king to a8 and now queen captures on a6 uh, getting rid of the uh, the queen's b captures and now knight captures on h8 winning back material rook captures on h8 and now bishop captures on g7 this is also a very nice pawn grab uh, because you don't have to worry about rook to g8 captures on g2 as white would trap the rook uh, so now rook g8 bishop to e5 which means that if the pawn is captured just let's say rook captures on g2 bishop g3 and then the next move you will have to part with the rook you will have to uh, give up the exchange so after bishop e5 bishop to c6 putting bishop on this beautiful diagonal but now just bishop back to g3 and here you have this situation where the material is almost equal white is up a pawn but as you can see white has a perfect pawn structure two pawn islands uh, nothing to worry about uh, black's pawn structure is completely shattered it's only down by uh, the position is down by a pawn in, in white's favor but uh, four pawn islands with, with a double day pawn this is completely winning for white and now it's only a matter of how how to actually win this knight to b6 now the knight cannot move as the g2 pawn would hang so how do you fix this rook to e1 you go after the e pawn and now after bishop to d5 a3 uh, taking care of this threat but uh, we have pawn to c4 by black now trying to ruin white's pawn structure by playing c3 and now knight to d4 offering the g2 pawn for the 
for, for the e6 pawn, rook to g6 defending and now pawn to f4, preparing to completely shatter black's dreams and hopes with pawn to f5, we have knight to d7 and now pawn to f5, beautifully played here, uh, we have e captures on f5 and now the rook also comes into the game, now the rook will control the 7th rank and we all know why uh, they call the rook on the 7th rank a pig, uh, because it just gobbles up everything, so king to b7, rook to e7 now attacks the knight, king to c8 and now knight captures on f5 we have pawn to c3 trying to ruin white's pawn structure just b captures on c3 it's not a problem because it's an extra pawn bishop captures on g2 and now rook to e2 this is a wonderful idea of how to trade down into a completely winning endgame uh, because you really want your e7 square for the for the knight and now with the bishop on g2 you have a perfect square for the rook so and you could also play knight to h4 just attack the rook and the bishop this also works but rook to e2 is fine uh, bishop to f3 attacks the rook, rook e3 now uh, further harasses the bishop and knight to e7 is coming if you don't want to be down a full piece. So bishop g4, knight to e7 check, king to b7 and now knight captures on g6, h captures and now rook to e4. Now of course it's even more winning for white because not only is white up a pawn, white is also up the exchange. So bishop to f5 and now rook to b4 with check, king c6, uh, bishop to f2. Now uh, going after one more pawn, pawn to a5 and now rook to b1. You could put the rook pretty much anywhere, but the b1 also works. Knight, knight to e5, uh, bishop captures on a7 and now knight to c4. So uh, it's a beautiful square for the knight. You can't really kick it away with the rook. You can't touch it with the bishop because it's on a light square, uh, but white's position is just so much better. Uh, even with this beautiful knight, there's nothing to be done. So a4. Uh, by white we have knight to a3 attacking the rook but just rook to b6 with check king to c7 and now rook to f6 preparing h4 h5 to weaken the bishop on f5 king to d7 and now pawn to h4 and okay you could maybe go king to uh, king to e7 to try and harass the rook but that would be terrible if you tried this to sort of uh, make the rook move then you run into rook captures on f5 and of course the king and knight are on dark squares you have to always be careful about that especially if your opponent only has a dark square bishop you should really be careful what you put on dark squares so knight to c4 the knight first has to move but now just h5 and that's pretty much it king e7 was played bishop to d4 defending the rook and here uh, Anna Maya Kazarian resigned as there is absolutely absolutely nothing more to be done in this game uh, you can't uh, attack the bishop you can't go after any pawns uh, the, the bishop and king completely block the knight from going after the a4 pawn uh, you, you can't capture because the bishop hangs if you do nothing then white will just advance the pawn and win the game so there is absolutely nothing to be done here or you can even capture and then uh, advance the g pawn doesn't really matter so it was in this position on move 45 that uh, Anna Maya Kazarian resigned and what a what a wonderful victory for for Mike Ketman uh, which I'm very very certain I'm pronouncing uh, very poorly but what are you gonna do uh, but yeah I mean this position uh, here when uh, the, the black king castle and this rook to d6 move really really a wonderful way uh definitely a way to play in the in the style of uh, Karl Schlechter just going all out and uh eliminating your opponent uh, very very quickly or or losing but you you did go all out uh so definitely fitting of a Schlechter variation uh, against the French defense uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it I don't know if I mentioned it but yeah to the, for those of you who enjoy and like Christmas you know Merry Christmas hope you hope you have a great time with your family and that uh, you know you you ch cherish what matters most in life and uh, you know that you uh, have um, a, a great re rest of the year and then of course uh, a good results will come uh, on the board and off the board uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank David Groskind, Theodoros Katsimparos, uh, Scott Mellis, Jack Schroeder, and David Kimura for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world, uh, the World Rapid and Blitz Championship starts very, very soon. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.